we looked at this polynomial, and what I'm going to ask you is find all the zeros. Okay? Find every single one of the zeros. I haven't given you any zeros yet. Right? So far, we worked on, hey, here's a zero, here's a factor. And then you can apply synthetic division or long division. Here, I haven't given you any information. I just say, hey, give me, find, the, find all the zeros. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. Well, you can look into factoring it. You could go ahead and do that. And then we could see, now, is this, could you factor it, though? Is it factorable? Now, you could see, well, you could look by, see, try to factor by grouping, yeah. right? And see if it works. But in this case, if you get a stomach block, I don't see that I can be able to factor this by grouping, right? So I'm kind of getting stuck. So there's a couple of things that we can do. One, we can always look, go back to that rational zero test that I talked about, where we look at our p and our q. So here, when we're taking the plus or minus the p over the q, what you guys have is 10 over the plus or minus the factors of 10 over 1. So again, let's look at the factors of 10. We have 10, 1, and 5, and 2, right? So we'll have 10, 5, 2, 1. And then it's nice when we have a coefficient of 1, because we know the only factor of coefficient of 1 is just going to be over 1. So the number of possible real zeros, and I'll write this over here. So the possible real zeros, and this is going to be like our bank, what we're going to be able to deal with, or what we're going to have you know, to choose from. So our possible real zeros are going to be plus or minus 10, 5, 2, and 1. That means if we have a rational 0, if we have a rational 0, it's going to be one of those numbers. All right? So now let's go to the next one. That was, Descartes rule, or that was the rational 0 test. The next thing is we can apply Descartes rule of signs. And I'll try to make these a little bit quicker. If we bring this down, bring down our signs, positive, negative, positive, negative. Right? So we have 1, 2, 3, right? Two, three alternating signs. So by looking at Descartes, or this would be postural, sorry, that's not real, it's rational. So if we're looking at um, the real, the real zeros, we have a possibility of 3 or 1. Because remember, you subtract an even number. Yes? There's three alternating signs, and then subtract an even number of two. Question? OK. So you have your alternating signs. Remember, I just brought down the signs of my monomials, brought them down, and I have three or one. And then if we determine f of negative x, I have negative x cubed minus 6, negative x squared plus 13 times negative x minus 10. So therefore, negative x cubed, that becomes positive, negative 6x squared, minus 13x minus 10. And you can see, is there any alternating signs? Yes? Wouldn't the, x, the negative x, wouldn't that be positive because it's cubed? This one? Yes. Uh, well, think about it. Just do no, negative. No, OK. So you guys can see, is there any zeros here? Or any negative zeros? No. So the number of negative is 0. All right? So. Here comes the question of the day. All right. I have this polynomial or this function, polynomial function. I have not given you the zero. All I've given you is a couple tests to help you determine the possible zeros. The only thing we know right now is we know that there's, a, there's three positive or one positive, and there's no negative. And if it is rational, if it is rational, it's going to be one of these numbers. All right? So let's pretend it is one of these numbers. Jessica, do you remember how can we determine if, let's say, number 5 is a 0? How can we determine if 5 is a 0? You want to apply what? The what? Yes, you can apply 0 product property. But so how are we going to get to that quotient to apply 0 product property? We want to use a division technique to make sure it divides into there with the remainder of 0. So our division that we've used is synthetic. synthetic, right? Not authentic, but it's been synthetic. So <laughs> what you could do, and I'm going to kind of go through this a process, because ladies and gentlemen, I've told you when we started in this class, um, as far as our graphing technology, is if you don't have your graphing technology, we need to choose. We need to f determine which one of these are the case. Now, that what's been helpful about Descartes' dual signs, Will, 
is that do we know we have to do, are we do we have to do plus and minus for all these or do we just have to do the positive because the negative there is no negative right we know there's no negative real zero so guess what let's just worry about the positive all right now ladies and gentlemen if I don't have graphing technology guess what I'm doing I now have to apply synthetic division for every one of those zeros until I find one Now, it's nice that I don't have to do the negative, because now I can just do the first two zeros, one and two. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm going to do I'm going to do the easy ones as much as I can, right? Then I'll work up to harder numbers. I don't want to do fractions. Fortunately, we don't have any um, actual fractions uh, dealing with this. But you know, if you have like two thirds, you're going to want to do synthetic division with the number one before you do synthetic division with two thirds, right? Even though we did practice it. So let's do a quick little synthetic division. Bring down one. One times one is one. That becomes a negative five. Negative five times one is negative five. Uh, that's going to be uh, eight. Eight times one is eight. Negative two. So therefore, is one a zero? No. No, it's not. Yes? Um, if I factor it back, you have to do that, right? I'll talk about it in just a second. So now we go into one. Bring down the one. One times two is two. Negative four. Negative eight. Five. Um, positive 10. Zero. Therefore, we now have a remainder, constant, linear, and quadratic. So therefore, you have x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now, getting back to you, Jessica, so now we have our remaining quotient factor, right? Our remaining quotient factor, so therefore, to find the remaining zeros, we know that this is a factor. So yes, we can apply the zero product property by setting it equal to zero. And then how are we going to solve this by all those worksheets I've given to you? You're going to have to, Samantha, do what? Factor, right? So therefore, you factor this. Um, what is that? I'm thinking of. negative 5. But it's a positive 5. Not factoring? Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you have trouble with the factoring problem, all right? Now remember, we said there's a possibility of one real zero or three, right? There's a possibility of one or three. So therefore, this factor of two, or the factor of x minus two, that's the factor, and the zero would be x equals two. That means that could be the only one. So if you only have, you know you have no zeros or no negative zeros, you have one positive, what are the other two must be? What other, what other type of numbers can we have? Imaginary, imaginary right? They're going to be two imaginary zeros. So let's just go and confirm this by quadratic formula. So if I take um, plus or minus 4 minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. So we have 16 minus 20 divided by 2 times a, which is 1 divided by 2. So therefore, equals x. Let's get this. So we have 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2 equals x. 4 plus or minus 2i over 2 equals x. So therefore, x equals 2 plus or minus i. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. You do see that you have two more variables. Or I'm sorry, two more zeros, but they're not real, right? They're complex, OK? So that's how you're going to do it if you do not have a graphing technology. Um, what I'm going to recommend to you guys.